Hi, welcome to another DFT Fringe tutorial. In this one, I'm going to explain how you can use DFT Fringe to uh, determine the right exposure for your interferogram. So first off, let's make a well-exposed interferogram of a perfect mirror. I'm going to use DFT Fringe to do that. We'll go to the simulations, iGram, and I've already set up, it'll be uh, 20 fringes of tilt on the X and the Y perfect correction, and I've made the DFT, um, the interferogram size, be 900 pixels. Click OK, and there's our interferogram. Yeah, with this uh, DFT tools, as we can show the in, an intensity graph over here on the right-hand side. Click on the show intensity graph, and here it is. I'll enlarge it a little bit. What we can see from this, let me change th through the, there we have now gone right down through this diameter of the interferogram. And you can see that the fringe pattern is more or less sinusoidal, soil and that the intensity varies from zero to 255. That's the standard camera pixel intensity. Our interferogram actually varies less than that uh, overall range. But that's what a, uh, a perfect interferogram looks like. We can also look at the color channels by using this control right here called Show Color Channels. And here we'll see that we have all of our information in the red channel here there's nothing in the green and blue channels over here on the right-hand side because the simulation software didn't add anything in there. But in general, if this was a red laser, we should see mostly only red information in the color channels. One more thing we can do is turn on the uh, DFT, go to preferences, turn on the DFT thumbnail and it will show us what the uh, discrete Fourier transform of this uh, image looks like when I do a crop. And, yeah, there it is. We see that it has two side lobes on either side and it doesn't have any ghost or harmonic side lobes extending out past that. Okay, so that's what the simulated diagram looks like. Let's take a look at some real-world interferograms. In this case, I'm first going to pick an interferogram that was way overexposed. It was taken from a web webcam. Find it, here it is. Now I have the intensity plot here. We see that the red uh, uh, channel is completely saturated and data has fallen, spilled over into the blue and the green channels. If we look over here at the uh, DFT, it's kind of a muddled mess a bit. And we can see in all the channels here that there is some information. I'm going to close that one. And let's go in and change what the DFT sees by this control will change what channels it looks at. Let's try the blue channel and watch the DFT over here change as I now recompute the DFT. We see that under the blue channel we got actually pretty good side lobed here with only a small ghost channel off to the side. If we use all red, blue, green we'll get the the one we saw before. Actually, I think it's even a worse one. If we pick just the red channel, we get that. And if, if we pick the green channel, we get that one. So this one's not too bad, but the uh, image kind of dies over here in the upper half part compared to the blue one. So there's the blue one. But anyway, this interferogram is really not suitable at all for uh, the DFT analysis. 
this chart, an intensity profile chart, has some other interesting characteristics or shows some interesting characteristics. And if we look at the blue channel here, and we remember the sinusoid that we saw in the perfect channel, it's sort of sinusoidal down here. But up here we see that the tops are very flat and we have really sharp spiky bottoms. And looking here at the blue channel, this is actually the gamma correction taking over in the camera. And what the gamma, you can look up uh, gamma correction on uh, the web, but basically what it's going to do for us is it tries to make sure the highlights don't oversaturate in most pictures so that they'll look good on an LCD screen or a CRT screen. So anyway, this is the camera doing things to the interferogram that will actually show up uh, in, in, a, in other things. We'll talk about that in just a minute. This was a really overexposed, way overexposed interferogram. Let's take a look at a different one. Yes, this is the one I want. Now, this one looks like I had thought for a long time that this is would be a very nice exposure. And that's kind of what we'd like to look at. We have really nice reds and we have really nice blacks. But let's take a look at that graph of the intensity. And so now the plot is right along this diagonal, right through the perpendicular to the fringes. And let's take a look. It's not sinusoidal at all. The camera uh, gamma correction has really flattened the tops out for us quite a bit. And um, that's about all I want to say about that now. All right, so I'm going to find another interferogram that I think is a good example. This is similar to the last one. Let's take a look at it. Once again, we see that the tops have been flattened out and um, the, the bottom looks about right, but the tops are flattened out. And if we look at the DFT up here, we see quite a few side lobes, more than just the, the two that we want to deal with. We see harmonics from those, and those harmonics are caused by the flattening of this um, intensity of the fringes. So that's what gamma does to us. And so I decided to add some controls to DFT fringe that tries to reverse out the gamma correction. I've discovered that for my camera, about a 2.4 gamma value. And if I tell it to then remove that, watch what happens to our DFT over here when I change the plot a bit. Oops, that's not what I expected at all. Uh. Okay, I know what I had wrong. I had selected the blue channel, which has almost no information into it. So let's go back to auto mode and recompute the DFT. There we go. Now let me try to show what I was originally going to show. Get back to this screen and turn the gamma correction off. Now we turn it back on. See how the image dims, darkens a bit, and the one of the, at least some of the side lobes, extra side lobes, disappear. Let's bring the intensity graph back up. And so here's with gamma correction, gamma correction removal not removed. And here it is removed. And we, I still can't get the tops as pointy as it should, but it does uh, help, help a bit, as you can see. Let's move this screen way up here so it doesn't now we can watch it there's the difference back and forth so anyway that's the new gamma correction removal of DFT fringe and I can talk a little bit later of does that help or does that matter okay well I had an interferogram that was too bright now here's one that really is too dim And you can see 
that we're only using up about half of the available image intensity and everything is way down below. Of course, I have gamma correction turned on. Let me turn it off. Uh, there we go. So, but let me reload this interferogram to make sure it's got what I want. There we go. And I'll crop it so that the plots expand out. So here we can see over here, way on the uh, upper left side, it's actually way too dark, hardly any information at all. And uh, not good sinusoid pattern. Starting about right in here, we have fairly good sinusoidal pattern. At least the tops are as pointy as the bottoms. But not much further than that, then the camera starts adding gamma correction back in and flattening the tops back out. But overall, the the DFT actually looks pretty good, even when we don't have the reverse gamma correction turned on. I'm going to turn on and see what happens. Right, you can see the little bit of the ghost side lobe disappeared. Um, and what happens if we analyze this one? I haven't done this before, so I might be surprised see what happens. Yeah, over on that left left hand side where the image intensity was so low we just really have a uh, crummy surface analysis and uh, probably lots of um, unwrap errors and this surface just went wild there so the intensity was just way too low to really get a good analysis. Okay, well, I jumped ahead and got what I think is an adequate interferogram intensity, ad adequately exposed uh, interferogram. And here it is, and here's its plot. And let's get its, here is its DFT. It has some side lobes out here that I don't quite understand, and it has an extra one here as well. But it does, uh, compute fairly well. Here is its surface and we certainly do see some fringe print through through there and I'm going to try to uh, reverse the gamma correction and see if that helps that at all. I'll compute the surface again. And it has somewhat less problems, although I can see we have some unwrap errors and caused a really high edge over here. Okay, so this is what I've learned about the intensity that I'd like to have. And there's, of course, it's a trade-off between having too much intensity and then uh, creating a lot of uh, Print, fringe print through because of the gamma correction, which is over in this section. At least my camera, which is an Icon D40, behaves that way. What I think is an ideal area, or the best that I could get, was this area right in here, where we have enough intensity for the program to work, and yet um, the gamma correction hasn't rounded the tops too much. So that's my uh, analysis of the situation at the moment. Thank you.